It was the night before Halloween in 2001. Cleo Aska told his wife that he was running back to the store to get a key from under the mat and check his back door locks. He was found dead inside his store the next morning. And those door locks could help point investigators towards his killer. Time has changed the building sitting at the corner of University and Windermere in Arlington. Renovations, different stores, different people. But the image of this building, surrounded by yellow crime scene tape, will forever be frozen in time for those that knew Cleo Aska. He owned Spiritual Heights, which sold clothing and records. He was also a husband and father of two young boys. One, he was discovered about 8.30 in the morning mm -hmm. um, by friends of his who were coming to uh, the store who had not seen him from the uh, evening before. Shot and killed. Halloween day had become a true nightmare. Cleo's widow, Kyra, has since moved to Atlanta, but spoke with us via Skype. She remembers arriving at his store that morning. I'm watching the police officers turn cars around, but then when my car comes up to the yellow tape, they lift it up. At that point, my heart sank because I knew. She says Cleo had just put in a new back door to be up to regulation and left home around 9.30 p.m. So he just was like, I'm just going to go up there, get the key, lock the back door, and I'll be back. And that was the last time she ever saw him. And he was discovered inside that building. Um, he had been uh, shot and killed. And the one of the interesting factors in that is that the business was locked uh, from the inside. Leo killed, yet all the doors were locked. No forced entry, no attempted robbery. One other possible factor, detectives did find marijuana at the scene. Uh, the investigation later revealed that there had been some um, drug uh, transactions that had gone on. With all those factors, cold case detectives strongly believe Cleo knew his killer. This was not a random attack. Cleo Aska was only 25 years old, but he had already accomplished many of his dreams. He had worked hard for years to get the money to open his own store, but his greatest joy in life, his two sons, Jabari and Ajani. Kyra says he loved being with his sons and had a giving heart. When Cleo found out Ajani's daycare was trying to raise money for computers, he stepped in to help. Month, the entire month, any monies he made from his store, he took that money and he bought my son's daycare six brand new computers. And Ajani remembers how his dad could make the class laugh. So like he would like stick his head by the door and like make faces and like they would laugh and be like, you don't see it? And I'm like, nah, then I would see it. And I was just like, you know, he just brought like joy to even the kids that really didn't even know who he was. A man that loved his family. For more than a decade now, they have struggled with how could Cleo's life end so suddenly inside these walls. We went with Sergeant Dan Jansen and Detective Ray Reeves with so JSO's cold case unit back to the scene. They say reopening the case with fresh eyes could create new leads. You could ask questions then that you didn't even know to ask when you were there in the first place. And they say they do have an eye on a person of interest in this case. We have this indication that the that um, Cleo probably knew who his killer was, and so um, that, that's, that's a huge factor that kind of comes into play. And, and physical evidence. They say they are taking evidence from the scene 16 years ago and taking another look at it through modern DNA advancements. And as time passes, people can get comfortable. They believe whomever killed Cleo has likely told someone. My belief is that um, that they would not be, have kept quiet. They would have said something to someone. And, um, and maybe some of those people aren't the best of friends anymore, um, or maybe not in a relationship anymore, and we'd love to hear from them. Kyra says whomever took Cleo's life inside here in 2001 also took away the chance for him to build a lifetime of memories with his sons. It's been a long 60 years, long. And I have been his voice. I have done everything that I can to make people remember him and for someone to come forward because they took a lot from me. They took a lot from his children. 
As we approach 16 years since his murder, Cleo Aska's family says this is their last hope that maybe somebody will come forward with information. If you know anything, please contact the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office or Crime Stoppers at 1-866-845-TIPS.